All right, so I've gotten a couple questions about this, and so let's make a video about markers, which is a new feature in MA3 version 1.6. Okay, so while I was prepping for this video, um, I actually discovered a little bug with markers that I then reported to uh, ACT Entertainment, um, but it just means I'm gonna show you a little workaround here. Um, it, there was some issues with fixture positioning and stuff. So, uh, the way to create a marker, <clears throat> and essentially uh, what a marker is, is it allows you to control um, a group of objects. This can be lighting objects, this can be scenic objects, uh, truss, this can be really anything. And you can put it all under a marker, and then with just one fixture ID, you can select everything. Um, quite helpful if you need to like reposition lots of things or if you want to move like a piece of truss um, with the fixtures on it and you want to be able to move it up and down and not have to move them separately. So for this example, I just uh, put a stick of truss in here and then I put four clay packy mythos in as well. So let's go to the patch. <clears throat> All right, so we see in our patch we have our truss here, fixture ID 2, and then 101 through 104 is uh, our fixtures. So we're going to go here, we're going to insert new fixture. We're going to go um, search here, uh, marker, and you can see, am I lighting it marker? Um, I talked about these a little bit in my um, overview video for MA3 version 1.6, but essentially a marker does uh, take up parameters. Um, so if you have tons and tons of markers, it will eat into your parameters um, in your show file, which again, I'm not a fan of, and I feel like it could have been created a little bit better. But hey, uh, so fixture ID for this, we're just going to make it 301, hit apply. All right, so now we see marker one, and we can expand this a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my truss here. I'm going to cut it, it disappears, um, and I'm now going to go to new fixture, and I'm going to hit paste. And you can see that now my truss is under my marker. Okay, so this is where I actually determined uh, the bug. So what I, would, what I was doing is I was selecting all of these, cutting them and then going to the marker and pasting them under the truss right so that way the um the fixtures are assigned to that particular truss not just to the marker um but when i did this i'm not actually going to do it because it's going to mess up um it moved all the fixture positioning it flipped it um really really weird i reported to act and they were able to recreate it on their end as well so it wasn't just an issue for me and they said they are reporting that to the uh, ma3 developers which is fun so we're not going to use this new fixture button under here. We're going to close. We're going to, um, oh no, we are. Sorry, I didn't have that expanded. So we're not going to use this one here, which is under the uh, the truss here. That is technically the correct tree structure that you should be using. But for this instance, because of the bug, we won't. We're going to go here instead, and we're going to paste. Okay, so now you can see we have our truss, and we have our fixtures uh, in here. So I'm now going to close it, it's going to ask me if I want to save. Yay. All right. So at first glance, nothing has changed uh, particularly. But what we can do now is we can hit the setup tab on our MA3 3D window. I can go 301, which is the fixture ID of our marker. And when I do this, you see it hasn't selected all of the objects. It selected this little like a virtual position on the ground. But now what I can do is I can move the entire object. Take a look at that. Um, in one and everything kind of stays aligned <clears throat> um, and this is all relative to the positions that they were uh, in so uh, zero for um, this here is the position is relative to the height that it was at so it's zero compared to the height it's not at point zero um, so this is really helpful you can see how this can be helpful if like you are working on a rig and you know that if there's going to be like motorized truss so like it might change song to song and you can be quickly be able to visualize it out. Um, I don't believe there is a way to store this in queues yet, um, unless I I'm, I'm sure you can create it in macros, but like there isn't an easy way to store it. One thing to note, we still have our, um, uh, we still have the marker selected. So I've selected all of these fixtures under the marker, um, is that it won't work with a line because the marker selects the marker which contains the object. Uh, all of the objects, and it treats all the objects as one. Um, it does not treat a, each individual light as its own light. So if I try to do an align here, a pan align, you can see that it just turns all of the lights as one. So align doesn't really work. So just be aware of that when you are starting to um, kind of create 
uh, you know, your markers and stuff. You can't use it quite like that. Yeah, of course, macros and stuff, you can work uh, with all of that. If you're looking for a video on how to make a basic macro, I did make one a while back, so you can check that out. Um, that's pretty basic. I'm, I'm going to make an updated, uh, more advanced version uh, in a little bit that I'm very excited about. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, hit that subscribe button, like it. Um, you know, send this on to a friend. I have a couple new videos coming out um, over the next month that I'm really excited about. I've been working quite hard on them, um, and hopefully, I'm you know, I'd love to get to 500 subscribers soon, which would be amazing. So, thank you guys for helping me out with that. All right, I hope that that was helpful. That is the basic, um, the basics of using markers in MA3 version 1.6.